Hello everyone. In this tutorial, I want to give an example uh, on uh, impedance matching using the quarter wave transformer method. Uh, let's suppose, for example, that we have here a generator, a generator right here, and then we have a transmission line, and then we have our resistive load right here, <clears throat> and this is that knot. This is RL, and we want to match this um, this load to the transmission line here. So, if you watched the last video, the method that we use is the quarter wavelength transformer method, whereby we use a transmission line here of impedance Z1, which is equal to the square root of Z0 times RL, and the length of this transmission line has to be equal to the wavelength divided by 4. That's why it's called the quarter wavelength method. And this wavelength is the wavelength of your signal here. So let's suppose that we have a load which is uh, 500 ohms, uh, just a resistive load. And let's suppose that Z0 is equal to 50 ohms. So we want to find the impedance Z1 of this transmission line here in order to match the line. And also we need uh, the length of the line to be equal to the wavelength divided by 4. So the first step is we calculate Z1. So Z1 will be equal to, in this case, 50 times 500. Uh, this is RL, and this here is Z0. And so this Z1 is equal to the square root of 25,000. And if we take the square root of that, this is going to be equal to 5 times the square root of 100 times the square root of 10, which is equal to 50 times the square root of 10, which is equal to square root of 10 times 50 is equal to, okay, about 158.11 ohms, which is the impedance uh, Z1 of the new transmission line, okay? So, the second thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that the length of this line is equal to your wavelength divided by 4. Now, you know that the wavelength times the frequency is equal to the propagation velocity. So, your wavelength is equal to the propagation divided by your frequency. So, you will know that the length will be equal to this divided by 4. So, that's it. That's how we do it. But uh, I want to give you an example using a, a simulator that I have here. Uh, this simulator here will model the transmission line, so we'll be able to see how this works uh, from the simulator. So uh, I have here a uh, voltage uh, generator. Let me set it to AC. Actually, let me set it to a square wave here. So it's a square wave with a frequency of 200 hertz. Here I have a transmission line element. Uh, the length of this transmission line here is in fact given by the delay, the time it takes for a signal to travel at the speed of light uh, through the line. So here you have a delay of 2 milliseconds. Uh, here I have the impedance of 50 ohms and here I have a resistor at the end of uh, 500 ohms. And if I let the simulation go, here we are seeing the scope is showing the signal, the square wave on the resistor. Now hold on, let me show you the square wave as it leaves the generator. So this is the square wave, a perfect square wave. When it reaches the, the load though, you see the signal is all messed up because nothing is matched. Now let's suppose this load were 50 ohms in fact. Then the, the transmission line would be matched and you see the signal is perfect. But this is not the case, we cannot just change the load like that. So let's so here you see that the transmission line is not matched to the load. So we want to use the quarter wavelength uh, method to match this load. So what we do is let's stop the simulator. Let's add another transmission line here. Transmission line uh, between the load and the original transmission line. Let me add a, a ground here. Okay, so now the first thing is we need to this transmission line to have the impedance that we found so it's 158.11 about and the second thing is we need the length of the transmission line to be 
uh, a quarter of the wavelength of our signal. So here we have to give the way the the length in terms of the delay. So let's go back to this here and let's calculate what the delay has to be for the length to be equal to the quarter wave. So the length is equal to the lambda over four. Now this is equal to the speed of light divided by the frequency times four. Well, this would be the propagation velocity, but for the simulator, the speed is the speed of light through the transmission line. So we want our length to be equal to c divided by 4 times the r frequency. Now, what is the length? The length is equal to the speed of light times the delay, uh, the, the, times the time that it takes for the signal to go from back to front. So because the simulator requires the length in, in terms of time, then our length is equal to the speed of light times time, which is the delay. So c times time is equal to c divided by 4 times the frequency. And so here we cross out c, and so the delay is equal to 1 over 4 times the frequency. Now remember, my frequency here is uh, 200 hertz. So our delay will be equal to 1 over 800 which is equal to 0 0.00125 if I'm not mistaken that let me check this right here so 1 divided by 800 okay that's right so the delay that's what the delay has to be on the line so this is 0 0.00125 and so now if we run the simulator, the signal should be much cleaner than before. So let me speed it up here. So we can see that the signal is much cl uh, cleaner than before. There is some slight, uh, you see these, all these things here on the signal. That's just because of the simulator. Uh, the simulator, uh, sometimes uh, it will not clean the signal up like this. Uh, very well, but uh, you can see that it's actually a square wave. We can see the square wave there. Those uh, the, the, those uh, disturbances should not be there in uh, real life. So let's uh, recap what we have done. First, we have found the impedance that this line has to have, which is 158.11 ohms, more or less. And then we set the length of the transmission line, uh, which in this case I had to, to, to give in terms of the delay. But of course, in real life, you would just cut a length of uh, the line uh, so that uh, the distance is uh, half your, is a quarter of your wavelength. So this is the uh, quarter wavelength transformer method to match your line. And just one thing, this must, uh, this requires a resistive load for this method to work. If your load has capacitors and inductors in it, then this method does not work. And so we need to do something uh, to convert uh, this uh, line, sorry, to convert the impedance into a purely resistive uh, impedance. And there's a method to do that, which involves also extending the line, uh, adding an extent of transmission line so that our impedance in this myth chart will become simply resistive. And that's what we'll be doing in the next video. So I'll see you there.